I found myself somewhere and it was empty. You know, there was no hand, no beginning, no depth, no height. I was just hanging there. I was there, I could feel my body, but I didn't really have a body, but I could feel a body and I was floating there. And then I lift up my head and then at 12 o'clock in front of me, I see a golden stair, like escalator, a golden stair. And then there was a, there was someone sitting on a very comfortable armchair on top of the stair. And then there was sunlight and clouds surrounding him. And he looked at me and I, I lift up my head. That was the light. So I lift up my head and I look at him, he look at me and he smiled to me and he shake his head. And then I wake up. So what I realized after a year of that all that experience is losing my leg is the best thing that I've ever done for me. 挑战您的价值观，返璞归真过生活。欢迎收看《十万个为什么》，我是你的好朋友路德。在节目一开始，提醒大家订阅我的频道，并打开小铃铛，千万不要错过每周五的精彩节目哦。Hello， 大家好，欢迎来到我的频道。那嗯。Um, 我知道我们很多的在国内的朋友都认识一个姐妹啊，她的名字叫廖志。在2008年的时候，她在四川大地震的时候呢，失去了她的双腿，然后后来她成为基督徒，嗯，而且到处做了很多很荣耀的见证。那她的故事也激励了很多的人。今天呢，我要来采访的一位朋友呢，他跟廖志有很相似的经历。Yeah, he is from Haiti, ah,、uh, from very far away. Um, so Ralph, uh, he is also a earthquake survivor in the Haiti earthquake in 2010. Yeah, so welcome, Ralph. Thank you. I'm so happy to be here, Ralph. <laughs> Thank you for all the work、uh, you're doing for God's kingdom and to encourage people. Thank、and、you. I look forward to contribute. Yeah. So right now you are in New York. Yep, I'm in New York City. New York York City. I'm right below Central Park right now. Wow!、Great、But、Central、in 2010,、Park. you were in Haiti and you experienced、yep. the horrible earthquake. Yeah. So could you、um, just briefly describe a little bit, like,、uh, what kind of life did you have at that time? <laughs> I was before the I was, earthquake. I was living the high life. I've made it. You know, I was 20 and I've made it already. I studied the media and entertainment company when I was 16, and by the time of the earthquake, I reached the top of my career, and I was like, I've done everything I wanted to do. Well, kind of, you know, like now it was just time for me to just sustain it. You would say a successful life. Very successful. I was probably the most successful teenager in Haiti at that time.、Mm, wow. And you said your parents were Christians. Yeah, my mom is a very devout Christian lady. You know, one of those ladies who pray and pray all the time. Oh, yeah, yeah. How about you? Were you a very strong believer at that time? No, you know, I think for some reason I can say I still respect God, but I was not. I think I was. It was just unconsciously, but consciously I didn't. I was kind of an atheist at that time, you know. I because that my faith was getting in the way. I think my faith was getting in the way of my success、uh, mm. because I was doing a lot of secular music production, and and as a Christian, I had some limits in what I can do and cannot do. So I felt the best thing to do is to get rid of my faith, so I can be limitless in my success. And I did, and I was. I thought I was. On the day of earthquake, you were in a building.、Mm -hmm. And were you alone, or were you with other friends? Yeah, my my uncle was with me in、oh. the building, and then you know, like where I was, but also my aunt, and then there is a little there is a little boy, my sister, who were all in the building、mm. at the time of the earthquake. Do you still remember what what was happening? Yeah, I remember very clearly. You know, I was in the yeah first story floor building, building was shaking. Building, you know, I was on the fourth floor,、mm -hmm. and then I ran downstairs. By the time I get to the second floor of the building, the building completely collapsed, and I was buried. And the little boy was right was right around where I was, right beside me,、mm -hmm. and he died. You know, he was crushed; his eyes come out of his socket. It was bad, very bad. So that's where I was. You know, I was there, trapped, and I could have. I quickly realized I'm gonna die. 
And mm -hmm. my first thought was about all the things I built, my fame, my success, my money, my, my, you know, my empire. And I quickly realized I can't have that. I'm dying and I can't take that with me. And then I'm like, well, then what then happened to that? And then I realized also I can't control what's going to happen to that. And then that I quickly realized that I was not the most successful kid in Haiti. I was the dumbest kid. Oh, I realized, you know, what life is about. Because I never, I can't think of a time where I was full of so much regret. Mm. Because I feel like I waste, here I am dying and I realized I wasted my life. I just wasted my whole life. I compromised the most valuable thing to me, which was my faith to have that mm -hmm. and I never have it. Right. And that mm -hmm. was, and then I yeah. died and God resurrected me after half an hour. And then I was hanging upside down on the other side of the building for eight hours. Literally. I mean, that, that sounds unbelievable. This all sounds unbelievable, but, uh, it's God's miracle to me. I couldn't believe, but, uh, you know, like I was so secular that, you know, I would not believe I died, but. I think God made it clear to me, you know, when I come out of a building where people were crushed in the building, and then I came out with two broken, you know, both of my legs were broken, but there was no injury in my upper body. It was strange, you know? So it was a clear sign uh, for God to remind me that, you know, to make it clear to me that, you know, I spare you, I give you a second second life, a second chance, or mm -hmm. people will say a second list in life. Uh, so you you know you decide what you want to do with it. well i decided if i survive this i'm gonna live a life to serve people and bring glory to god during the uh earthquake um you said you were a uh, atheist yeah but the first thought came into your mind is you cry to god you didn't believe in god but at that moment somehow you just started to yeah. realize god exists <laughs> you were up to reality I mean, you know, as human, we can be so prideful. We mm -hmm. fool out of ourselves. You know, we think we know this, we know that, we have education. Particularly yeah. when you ask, you know, I was not just successful in business because I was involved with music and and media business. I was famous too. So, mm -hmm. you know, you think you are that important. And then I think I was very important. I was full of myself. I was over my head. So mm -hmm. actually, I thought I was God, you know, because people kind of worship me, right? Yeah. And, so, you can control your life <laughs> yes and then suddenly i'm in that building i was helpless yeah. i was helpless you were in pain was, it's not even the pain was not even started yet right oh, really? i'm dying right i'm dying i'm trapped and i can't do anything about it mm. like when i was hanging upside down for, in that you, building, move? you, you could you couldn't move right it's almost like no, a, first of all when i was you know when i was first buried for like probably half an hour i was dead i was out of it and then when I wake up for eight hours, I was hanging upside down. So I could move, but like I was literally hanging. I remember my uncle had to come with a big, like five feet tall box. There yeah. was those box of Goodwill stuff in Haiti. He had to come with one of those big box, trashy box full of stuff and put under me for me to lean on and some of the rubbles because I was literally hanging upside down. So it's, but I couldn't, you know, I could have uh, uh, like, to, to give you some context about Haiti, healthcare infrastructure, at that time there was only one fire station for the whole country and it was not really working. It was a dysfunctional fire station. So even there's stories of people who were so rich, who offer so much wealth to people to rescue them. But you know, those poor people will do anything they can, but they couldn't rescue them. Or you have people who were super rich or successful politician, people who run for president all died during the the earthquake. So, wow. like me, it's like, you know, when you have those prototype of the, the, you know, the, the earliest of the country, yeah. you know, you, and you are dying and you realize there is nothing you can do to save yourself. Mm. Then you realize there is a God. <laughs> then you realize you were not as powerful as you thought you were. You know, the world pulled me into thinking I was powerful, but I was not. It was a lie. Did you, did you think about uh, what's going to happen after death? Have you thought about that? Yes. So my first thought was because, you know, I, I still, so now my fifth, because I grew up, you know, very like strict, uh, Christian, uh, my mom is very strict about everything. Right. So I knew everything I needed to know. I was just, uh, you know, yeah. and in, in, in a good, well, say it in a, in a more positive way, it was just the 
competitiveness and you know i'm very determined so i don't even have to be greedy or anything but it was more like i want to do it i want to accomplish mm. and then i'm focusing on that and i and then now i'm dying i realized wait a minute in a few seconds i'm gonna die and there was a thief who was at the cross with jesus two thousand years ago and jesus saved him at the cross he didn't do anything for it he didn't earn it mm -hmm. all he did was i recognize i'm a sinner can you please save me and jesus said there you have it it's free we don't earn our salvation right so i'm like okay so and that's kind of helped me in life to understand there is nothing i can do to earn my salvation it's free it's god's grace it's not because i go to church all the time or i pray or i do this or i do that i do those stuff but not that's not what's saving me what mm -hmm. saved me is the fact that Jesus died at the cross for me. And all it's taking is for me to say, Jesus, I recognize you as God. Please forgive my sin. And anyone watching this video can say that in your heart and Jesus will come in your heart and save them. And if they truly say it with your heart and they pray, Jesus will reveal himself to them. Even they don't know, even they don't know, even they don't talk to any other Christians. Even they probably they are somewhere in China right now. Mm -hmm. I know a lot of your audience is there and they won't see someone to talk to. But they said that in your heart and they said, God, Holy Spirit, come and show me who you are. God will come and show them. Who is. So that's what I did. I said, God, you know, I'm going to die. Now I realize I'm losing everything. It's over. But just please, like the thief, give me a corner where you are. You know, I don't need the best place, but give me a little corner. Even the least important place. Just put me somewhere. Do not let me be where you are now. Mm. You know what we'll call hell, right? Yeah. And yeah. Now we don't talk about hell anymore, but hell is a reality. So uh, I said, God, just save me. Whatever we think hell look like, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, but I want to be where Jesus is at. So that's, that was my prayer. And then that's when I died. That's the last thing I remember. It, it happened very quickly. Between the time the building shaked to that time, it was literally less than two minutes. Wow. I will say less than a minute. It's very quickly, you know, very fast. Mm -hmm. Uh, so suddenly, suddenly, uh, all the truths, all the scriptures that you have learned became true. <laughs> yeah, because reality it, comes. Yeah, everything just came to your your mind, and you realize they are. They are I true. quickly realized the only thing we all have, the only thing that holds us together, the only little rod, the only little thread that holds us is our breath, mm. and our breath is is power from God, and God can take it away anytime we don't know when he's gonna take it away life is very fragile very very life is very you don't have a second like you don't have a second chance i mean god give me a second list great but that's not the way life operates you die you die you die and you can't you know like i can lose my money and work and have more money or i can lose my job and get another job i can lose my a friend and get another friend i can lose a girlfriend and get another girlfriend right but when you lose your life you lose your life you mm -hmm. can't buy it you, you, there is no insurance for life in america we have insurance i even heard someone said there is insurance for pets you have insurance for everything i was buying my chair they offered me insurance for my chair <laughs> <laughs> yes <laughs> there is no insurance for life none mm -hmm. you can have you can be the wealthiest guy on earth i mean i i don't want to name out of respect but we know some of the wealthiest people in the world that that die at a young age with not even sudden death with cancer or other diseases that your billions could not cure. That's life. That's the reality of life. And fortunately, I praise God. I praise God. I realized that. Yeah. So after eight hours, after eight hours, uh, God sent someone to rescue you. Yeah. Well, there were people there the whole time. They just couldn't rescue me. Because the way I was in the building and they didn't have resources to rescue me, it was not fire. You know, it was people with their bare hand trying to dug me out. And they, you know, they had one of my legs was kind of sandwiched in the concrete. So they had to, they had to kind of carve me out of that. So they literally had to find a stretch hammer and, and cut my flesh and, and with the concrete and cut me out of it. So it was not, you know, it was. I think you mentioned uh, your upper body was fine, but your yeah. lower body was injured. Yeah. So, so how how bad was that? I, I had both of my femur was broken in my left and my right leg, and then my my left leg was crushed. You know, like mm. like I, I as a result, I have one leg now. They had to cut off my leg, 
and you know i become an amputee and that was even harder because the hard part of getting to the hospital it was very like they had to push me in a wheelbarrow because there was no transportation there was no phone signal no like no, nothing no communication so my family didn't know exactly what was happening to me they didn't know so and there was no transportation so my, my cousins were there in the capital at school for school as well so they put me in a wheelbarrow and pushed me you know down there that's mm -hmm. what they were doing and then when i finally get there you know like after a day in to my hometown where we hope because the hospital were already dysfunctional i mean i give you an idea of the you know mm -hmm. fire station to just give you an idea of the whole healthcare infrastructure in haiti so hospital was not there was not a hospital really mm -hmm. in haiti that were really doing well so after mm -hmm. the earthquake, a lot of those hospitals fell, doctors died. So there was barely anything left. So finally get to the hospital outside of the big city, which was, you know, more like those doctors opened up. My leg was in the cardboard. My crushed leg was in the cardboard. They opened up the cardboard and there was these Cuban doctors. I mean, Cubans are good doctors. There was the Cuban doctors who came to help in Haiti and they were there. They said, there is nothing we can do. We don't have equipment. We don't have orthopedic surgeon. There is nothing we can do. So they shipped me to the hospital. So I had to wait for a week before I had my first medical care or surgery. And at that point, I was decomposing a life. Mm -hmm. And it was not a testimony for God to show me that he is the one keeping me alive. Because a week after with all this injury, right, the infection in my leg, I mean, should have killed me. There was the story of that nurse who come and told us every morning when she came to the hospital, she couldn't hold her tears when she see me still alive because she is ho every night she go home and she think when she come back she will find me a dead man mm -hmm. and i was still alive so finally got i had my surgery i lost my leg now you know i still coming from a lot of pride so in haiti when you have one leg you are looked down open you know you are a disabled you are an outcast you are ugly you are useless you are you know you are you know you know they they have a caste system in india so you are in the lowest caste if Haiti had a caste system. So you are you are really a burden to people in society. And on top of that, they consider you to be ugly because you are you are disabled, you have one leg. So mm -hmm. here I am being this most most successful, whatever, most important teenager in Haiti, and now I'm becoming you yes. know one of the least favorite important people. And mm -hmm. I wanted to die. I'll be honest with you. I didn't realize that I didn't gain that strength and all that uh, I didn't see the glory of God the way I see it now, right from the get-go. No. You know, if, if there is someone watching this that are going through a tough situation mm -hmm. and as I'm talking, they think, oh, I'm so weak. No, I was like that too. I was, I was suicidal. I wanted to die because I thought my life was over. Mm -hmm. I was not suicidal because I hated God. I love God, but I was suicidal because I think, okay, first of all, like I, 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 I grasped God so well at that time. I was so close to God in a sense that I was, I know I'm going to go be with God. So I'm going to be so happy. But on top of that, mm -hmm. I, I was so prideful. I was so, I still care so much about how I look, what people think of me, that I didn't want to live with one leg where people would think that I'm a disabled person with one leg. So, you know, like with what I was doing, I knew I was going to be fine. I was not going to be economically an outcast. People were not going to look that, I mean, I was going to be able to provide for myself because I had a very great company. And I was, although I knew I was going to close my company, but you know, I knew I was going to build whatever I want in the country, but I, I was going to be ugly. And that was my problem. And, you know, among all the things I do, what I really enjoy doing the most was acting. And I knew if one leg now I can't act. Well, I really like comedy. What I should have realized, actually, I could have, you know, I would have been a better comedian with one leg. And probably that's something I can do at the early <laughs> project. You yeah. know, I can, I can do some YouTube and some comedy stuff with, you know, with one leg, you can do so many crazy stuff. People can laugh. So I should have realized that. But my first thought was no. I can't be an actor anymore. I am mm -hmm. ugly now. I have one leg. And, you know, I, I even did a beauty contest. So I like fashion. So I'm like, I'm not fashionable. I got all these lies. Satan put all sorts of lies in my life. And I'm like, yeah, I need to die. And so I had that belief that, you know, as a Christian, you can't commit suicide. So I, I, that was not part of my option. But that, you know, that's the, the only reason is because I, you know, I believe as a Christian, I shouldn't do that. That's kind of was the belief in Haiti, right? And mm -hmm. so but i pray god to take my life and mm -hmm. <laughs> that was 
I'll spare you, I'll, I'll spare you a lot of details, but there was so many pain at the hospital, so many surgeries, so many this, so many that, and that I, I get so discouraged. And then mm -hmm. I remember I was, I had a last because the big problem was the only leg I have left will not bend. Then my leg will stay straight like that. Oh. And so if you, you know, if you know some, like, uh, a lot of people will not realize that, but for you to walk, your leg bend mm -hmm. automatically. You know, you know, that's how you walk. You can't just walk if your leg doesn't bend. So I have one leg, it doesn't bend, which means I can't walk. And on top of that, I'm going to be sitting on a wheelchair for the rest of my life with my legs stiff in front of me. So I'm going to be sitting on a wheelchair with something for me to lay my so it's like mm -hmm. it's just to me it's like this is not this is a horrible life i don't want to live that life mm -hmm. so they were they went to the surgery room with me to force my leg to bend mm -hmm. they went out to surgery and stuff to force it to bend so before i go there i remember clearly i said with all my heart i said god when i get in that womb i don't want to come out alive i'm ready to meet you i'm ready to see your face i get in you know they give me anesthesia i fall asleep and i don't want to wake up so i get in and that was my by the way that was not my first surgery this reaction i'm going to describe to you was not usual right it was not you know usually i do fine through surgery and through uh anesthesia but this time they give me the anesthesia and quickly we feel like literally less than two seconds a feeling reach my go from the bottom of my feet to my heart and then there was crazy beeping in the womb and the nurse was, you know, going like, we're losing him. What's happening? They are calling my name. And then I was gone. And mm -hmm. then I was not having a dream. I was not having a vision. I found myself, you know, call it my soul or my spirit. I found myself somewhere and it was empty. You know, there was no hand, no beginning, no death, no height. I was just hanging there. Uh, let's describe it as what we call space, right? I'm in space, lost in space, far from Earth, and I'm there's no light. You know, I'm just floating there. I was there. I could feel my body, but I didn't really have a body. But I could feel a body, and I was floating there. And then I lift up my head, and then at twelve o'clock in front of me, I see a golden stair, like escalator, a golden stair. And then there was a there was someone sitting on a very comfortable armchair on top of the stair, and then there was sunlight and clouds surrounding him. And he looked at me and I, I lift up my head. That was the light. So I lift up my head and I look at him. He looked at me and he smiled to me and he shake his head. And then I wake up. Wow. And I, you know, I was standing in front of the kingdom of God. That's where I was standing. And then I look at this guy and he look at me. You know, I think my first thought should have been, this guy say your time is not over. That's not what, when I wake up, the first thing that, I heard he speak to me, you know, in my mind, not, you know, not audible, but in my mind, the first time I'm saying, this guy said to me, Ralph, you have no idea what makes someone poor. You have no idea what a good life is. You think a good life is about having what you think the world thinks you have. No, that's not the point. A good life is having me. You can lose one leg, but if you have me, you have more than one leg. You are good to go. And I clearly remember that. And that's what carried me through. That's when I said, because my thought was God is punishing me, all this stuff. Like that's why all this is happening to me. But God was saying to me, I am, I'm, I'm watching, you know, I, I'm standing at the end of your life. I'm standing on top of your life. There is a song I love that one time I was going through a difficult situation. God gave me a vision of him sitting at the high throne. And then my life was down like a, you know, like a, like a parcel of land that is fenced. And then he's sitting up there. He's looking at the beginning and the end of the fence. And then my life was like a small part of the whole thing he's looking at. So mm -hmm. it's like God telling me, Ralph, I'm looking at the end of your life. You know, I am on top of it. I'm still God. Mm -hmm. Like No matter what you're going through, no matter what people are going through, you need to remember, God is still God. He said, I'm letting this happen. Yes. I'm letting this happen. And or uh, i make it happen i believe in my specific case i think god make it happen because mm -hmm. it's not a bad thing at first it was a bad but it's not a bad thing i lose my leg you know so that that remind me well like job said i was still weak but like job said i said well like job said god give god take may his name be glorified so mm -hmm. if god confirmed to me this is happening on his watch 
then mm. I still don't accept it, but this is what it is. The verse that came to my mind was when Jesus said, store for yourself treasure in heaven where nobody can destroy. You know, like, I can have wealth here. It's, I don't even need to die. You know, someone can just have an allegation about me or whatever. You know, someone can take it from me or people can steal. No, I don't care. You know, mm. I don't care. If, if, I mean, I don't, everything I have is for God now. So I don't care what happened to what I have. I, I don't even care about, I do care, but I don't even care about my reputation. Like I care, you know, I strive to, but if someone slander me and then people think something bad of me, I'm like, okay, if mm -hmm. God don't want it, is that going to happen? You know, like Daniel say in the fire, Daniel's friend, Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, they said, God will save us through the fire. If he doesn't, then it doesn't matter. Even if he don't, even if he doesn't. So I, you know, I said the same thing. Life becomes so much easier. You know, I'm still struggling. I'm still a human, but so much easier. Mm. I don't have much here. And where everything I have is upstairs with God. And that, no matter what happened to me, mm -hmm. you know, people, people can do anything they want to me here on earth. But you can't deceive God. You can't steal what I have with God. You know, I mean, the enemy can try to. But so mm. my, everything is in Christ now. So I'm, I'm happy, much happier. Uh, much purposeful so i believe i believe you came back to life because god gave you this message and he want you to live your life your new life with this message would you agree with that i meant to that oh i totally agree that's when that, when i realized that after mm -hmm. about a year later i realized that mm -hmm. because that experience saved my life yeah and also god gave me a story now sometimes i go share i've shared stories sometimes in front of tens of thousands of people and i've seen people come and give their life to jesus after they heard my story wow. i've seen people who are going through cancer i remember i had a friend clearly he was dying he was so young he has a young family he was dying and mm -hmm. then he said ralph your story encouraged me because you have been through he said to me you have been through worse than i am and in my heart i was so open but i'm like no you're going through worse but i didn't tell him that because because he think I'm going through us that encouraged him while he was dying with cancer, leaving his kids and leaving his toddlers and his wife behind. He thought that was so, you know, uh, you have having a story that can encourage people going through tough time, not just by me being a good speaker, just telling them my story. He is out and that can give them a glimpse of hope. Okay, so there is purpose in my suffering. Oh, God is still his eyes is on me because he is this guy from Haiti. And, you know, I will think. I remember I was talking to an atheist. He said, you see, he said, he didn't know I was Christian. He said, that's why I'm an atheist. Why a guy from a poor country, on top of that, a good God allow you to lose your leg. And then I get to tell him, actually, it's the other way around. You know, you don't know, we see things with our own eyes, but we don't understand. And, you know, this is the story, actually. And this is a story itself of God is bad. This is a story of God is good. So what I realized after a year of that, all that experience is losing my leg is the best thing that I've ever done for me. The very best thing. And and I want to say again, someone who is watching this, don't feel bad if you haven't seen that. Because at first, I thought it was the worst thing God have done for me. I was suicidal, literally. I wanted to die. Mm -hmm. But God gave me grace to be patient, to wait, and trust that He is working everything for good. And, you know, some of you might not even see the purpose of your suffering here. Probably it's going to be in heaven when you see it. But just trust God. For I mean, call it fortunately, I was able to see it you know within a year that what god was doing in the losing of my leg is the very best thing that i've ever done for me nothing nothing else i haven't seen since i've lived i haven't seen anything god have done great things in my life after that but nothing compared to losing my leg it's a good life it's a very good life it's you know it's uh it's worth it <laughs>